My name is Leah Tobacon, I'm a physical nurse, and on behalf of the nurses here at Hamilton Women, we want to introduce Diane Knight. Um, she is, and I have written that, um, she is, represents the Northeast Tobacco Free Community Partnership and serves over 50 communities. And she is going to talk to you about the new look of nicotine. So um, it's really a thrill to be here. I was here last year. We were just talking about Griffin, who, who was on the stage with me uh, last year when he had done a project on vaping. And it was, it was really impressive. I had a really good time with him and his parents from the audience, and it was, it was fun. So um, it's, this is a great crowd. Thank you all for coming out. And, um, the climate has changed. So, so I direct the Northeast Tobacco Free Community Partnership, and it's a Department of Public Health uh, funded program. It's been around for years. I serve the Northeast of Massachusetts, and I've been very busy um, doing vaping talks, as you can well imagine, um, over the last few years, because we really um, have reached an epidemic um, in this state, and not just the state, but in the nation. So we'll go over um, a little bit about Vaping 101. For any of you who are unfamiliar with the products and how they work, I'll go over that a little bit, and the tobacco industry tactics, and a little bit about what you can do. So the statistics are for the state. One in two kids in high school has tried a vape product and one in five has used in the last 30 days. And one in 10 has ever tried a vape product in middle school. So in where I've been and in the circles that, that I'm in and the teachers and administrators that I talk with, I tend to think that's a little bit low from what people tell me. But this is the state data that um, that I go by. And as you can see here, you can tell I'm not a teacher. 6.4% um, <laughs> um, teens smoke cigarettes. So what we have done really, really well is teach our kids that smoking is bad. And they all know it. They get that. And the kids that are vaping it's right across the board. I mean, it's all kids. It's, it doesn't matter what town they're in, what socioeconomic class they're from, what their family, what their education is about, whether they're an athlete, it doesn't matter. They're all using. So that is, that's just what we're, what we're noticing. And as you can see here, this was the smoking rate way up here and how nicely it has come down over the, over the years. And same with all the other tobacco products. 2009, they, they tried to flavor cigarettes. The FDA, it was not allowed. So um, they started flavoring other tobacco products like cigars the small ones, the 69 cent ones. Kids were smoking those at the time, back a few years ago. And now then, about 10 years ago was when um, e you know, electronic cigarettes were introduced. And the first one that I had, I've done this a long time, and uh, the first one was this regular, looked like a regular cigarette. And this was, uh, I purchased it online for $100. And, um, and they were trying to sell it at malls and kiosks. I don't know if you ever saw it, but in, at the Rockingham Mall, someone that worked with me brought this, brought this up to me on a Monday morning. He said, you know, they're smoking in the mall. I said, no. Smoking? They said, oh, yeah. So she described the story. And in fact, it was a product like this. And we've had many incarnations and lots of changes since that, and that is not the product that we're going to 
that is um, popular today, but um, anyway. What we've seen in the last year is we've seen a, a doubling of, so we've gone from 12% to 21%. So in high schoolers, so the CDC, this really got their attention. We're seeing a huge jump in one year and a huge jump amongst middle schoolers as well, which is really alarming. So fortunately in Massachusetts, I have to say that we're really, our officials are really on it. Attorney General Mara Healy is all over this. She is investigating Jewel now, so she is, um, she has a whole staff of people, and never in my work career have I had a straight line to the Attorney General, but I do now. Um, and and um, the CDC, uh, the, um, uh, the Department of Public Health, the Commissioner, uh, Monica Burrell, is very involved. This is a hot topic for her. And I have to say, my most exciting day of the work year is when I go to Kick Butts Day, which is tomorrow at the State House. Um, can you try to turn it on? Okay, do whatever you say. <laughs> <laughs> Are we Okay. Good. I don't have to start over, do I? <laughs> oh, good. Thank you, Ethan. Appreciate it. I hate microphones. <laughs> I'm still not used to this. I do this all the time. And oh my God, microphones and televisions. <sighs> um, so where was I? Oh, so Monica Burrell will be at the State House tomorrow, along with 250 um, high school kids from the Commonwealth. They're in 84 chapters um, in different school districts. And they are teens that care about big tobacco targeting them. And they come to the State House to have a little training. And they've been trained at other times during the year, but they come tomorrow to be trained um, by the 84, the, the statewide movement that they're a part of. And then they go and educate their legislators tomorrow at noon time. So I travel with them and they bring the product and they talk to their legislators about what's going on in their schools and in their towns and what they're really facing. So the legislators, you know, I, th I think the fact that we did a lot of good work around this legislation just this past year by treating um, Wherever you can't smoke, you also can't vape now. So that was a law that just was passed. We've changed the law to, um, I guess we're gone again. <laughs> Is that better? Yeah, okay, there we go. I'll just check. Yeah. Um, and um, so, uh, yeah, so, and the laws that changed, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's really nice. Is that better? No. Is that better? Okay. Um, and so we raised the, the, the sales age to 21. So that's really exciting. Sorry about this. <laughs> we don't, I don't need it. I'm pretty yeah. 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 um, so, um, And so the legislators really pay attention to the kids. And they, they really love it. And the exciting thing is Monica Burrell is going to, um, Commissioner Burrell, is going to unveil tomorrow a media campaign. That's good. And, and is, going to, um, is going to unveil this youth education campaign. So this look of nicotine addiction that you see, the materials that we have in the back, was created to educate adults. So that's material back there on the back table for you. Tomorrow, we're going to be seeing the handout that's been created for kids, the um, poster that's been created by kids, for kids. 
I saw it, I was a part of the, I, I witnessed the focus groups where the kids made decisions about this poster. It wasn't a poster I would pick, but that's probably a good thing, okay? <laughs> None of the kids in the whole state, they, they all picked the same poster, they, so they all voted on the same one. And we also are very excited about this because I know that bathrooms are called jewel rooms, so we need a claim for the mirrors in the bathrooms. So if I have a little extra money in my budget at the end of the year, I'm going to be buying lots of claims for you because I think we need to get the message to the kids where they are or where people are that attempt to use the jewel. So that's, that's exciting. So that's all going to happen tomorrow and um, at the State House. So that's a little preview of what's to come tomorrow. Are any of you, Eric, do any of you not really know about vaping and about what this thing is and how it works? Does anyone need a refresher? Okay, good. There's always some, I mean, you know, it's hard to stay up with. So this is the one I use to talk about vaping um, and to introduce that it's, um, these products turn flavored liquid nicotine into an aerosol that is inhaled, okay? And they all have a place for the liquid. In this one, this is an open system. So the liquid goes in here. There is an atomizer here where the liquid is heated and you press a button and you inhale and there's always a lithium battery at the end of it. Whether it's a jewel, whether it's called a mod, whether it's called a tank, whether it's called a box, whether it's called an e-cigarette, whether it's called a vape, they're all the same. No matter what they look like, they're all the same. This is one of them, that's the same construction, even though it doesn't look like anything like this, okay? So that's um, the way that goes. And this is what I just went over, the mouthpiece and how it all works. And, um, and it's certainly, the other thing about these products is, what we're gonna talk about a little bit is Juul too. And Juul is the current product, okay? It's 70% of the market is owned by Juul. And Altria, which is Marlboro, and, uh, has just bought into the company. So if you thought they weren't somehow hooked up once, which I used to wonder a little briefly, now we know they're hooked up because 35% of the Juul company is owned by Altria. That happened in December. For $12.8 billion, Altria bought into the Juul company. So um, I don't think this is going away. And the product that's popular right now and is the most popular product um, in the jewel is clearly what young people are favoring um, is going to change. That's going to change. It's going to shift up. And uh, many of the products are mimicking the jewel. It looks, I have a product on the table over here. Thank you. Oh. Um, I have a product over on the table that is you can come up and see after, and and you'll see them. And one looks very similar to the jewel, but it's called the bow. And there are lots of new ones. And there's one new one that um, Mara Healy just did some sort of intervention with, and we're not going to be seeing it. So I, I don't know. We we have people. All I can tell you is we have people that really care in this state that are watching over this, and that's their job all the time is to be paying attention to this industry, thankfully. So this is what some of them look like. You've got, it looks like a pipe, it looks like a cigar, it looks like some kind of a whatever. One that looks like a pen. I used to carry 
this one, I, I think I do have it here yet today, but um, you know, there are all different looks to these things. Okay, the liquids. These liquids, are, they're not regulated by the FDA. So, you, there, and, and in liquids, there are about five ingredients. And, um, and some of them say there's no nicotine in them. They say zero, zero nicotine. And, uh, and some kids will say, well, mom, you know, there's no nicotine in this. You know, it's, it's just water vapor. It's just flavor. It's no big deal, Mom. It's just water vapor. But this, these products are not regulated by the FDA, and that is a real, real concern to me because you just don't know what's in some of them. And you don't know the ones that say zero nicotine test nicotine. So there, there, there is some nicotine in in all of them, and a lot of kids think that there's no, they were thinking, I, I don't know that that's the case now, that since so many kids are really addicted to the jewel or to these products, but um, they thought there was no nicotine in this. They really thought there was no nicotine in a jewel. So 66% of them, when they were studied by the Truth Initiative, thought that there was no nicotine in a jewel. So that's a little concerning. There are 8,000 flavors. 8,000 flavors you can pick from. Any kind of flavor you want is out there. And this is a slide that, that shows on the left that there is zero nicotine in it, and then if you turn it over on the back, you can see nicotine is listed in the ingredients. So it just doesn't give you a good feeling. Disposable vape pens. Vape pens are, do you see vape pens here? There are pens here, so yeah. And um, and some of the pens have THC in them, right? So so I'm not an expert, but about being able to identify. But what I'm being taught by resource officers and assistant principals is that the when you tip it upside down, the sort of the viscosity of the liquid is is heavier and and doesn't it's not as liquid in in THC as it is in one of these e-liquids. Um, so this big tank on the left. So if, if you were going down the highway and you saw a car filled with a cloud, that would be coming from the, the product on the left, the tank system. And I think this is a bow on the left, the one with the colorful covering, but that is, they call those skins and they go over um, the jewel or the bow that is on, the jewel is on the right. Um, they are charged on a computer, so when you get it, there is a handy dandy, I could do it right here, <laughs> I won't though. Um, there's a little charger right here, you plug right into the side, and you can be charging it during class. I mean, I don't know, does that, you know, that's what schools tell me, is that's not uncommon to be charging a jewel during class. You know, a couple, so jewel's been out three years. Three years, that's it. And they've skyrocketed to the top. Why? People say to me, why, why? Well, it's sleek, it's, I don't know, the kids liked it. They, they liked it. It slips under anything they want. There's vapeware that you can get online that, you know, has strings for the hoodie and you can slide this puppy right up into the string and you can just put it in your mouth. You can, you can hold it almost in your hand and use it. You know, it's they're pretty tricky, right? So, it's easily disguisable, it's comfortable and easy to hold, and, um, and each pod is worth a pack of cigarettes, 20 cigarettes, so the nicotine in 20 cigarettes. This product is not sold in the European Union, and 
I don't know how far out this slide is. When I get to it, I'll show you. I'll show you the amounts of nicotine that are in this versus what they sell in the European Union. They don't even allow it. And, and some of the e-liquids are salt-based, so they're a nicotine salt, which gets to the brain quicker and moves into their bodies pretty quickly. Kids can get addicted to this very, very easily. It doesn't take a lot to become addicted to a jewel. So that's really sad for me when I think about that. How long will a pod last? Yeah, everyone asks that. Yeah. Yeah. So how long? Well, it really depends on how many people are using it, you know. Sometimes they're passed around, so that's a whole other public health issue, <laughs> passing these things around. But, um, you know, it, I've, I've heard of going through two pods in a day. Now, what's a pod cost? Four dollars. So what's a pack of cigarettes? Ten. So this is cheap, right? So the cost of cigarettes went up and the use came down. These things are cheap. This whole unit is about $37, something like that. And so for kids that can't afford the whole kit, they can usually afford $4 for a pod, and they have their own pod, and then share the device. That's what some kids do. That's what I'm told. Any questions about the jewel while we're on the jewel slide? Yes. So are jewels um, typically only for the nicotine, the vapor, or can, is, is that a product that can Oh, good question, for thank you. Okay, so not that many months ago, they just sold the pods filled with nicotine. At that time, you could empty it and figure out how to get, now I could even figure out how, I didn't have to use YouTube to figure out how to get something else into an empty pod. But brilliantly, the company is now selling empties. So you can, in fact, put your THC into one of these pods. Yes, you can vape THC from this. So how do you know what's in it? <clears throat> I'm just curious, the nicotine of these products, is it synthetic? Is it or is it a extract from the plant? Yeah. It's, it's somehow it's extracted from a plant. Yeah, it's real nicotine. Yeah. Yeah. 16 times more likely to use a jewel compared to, so these younger kids are really attracted to this and, and using it, compared to even kids 25 to 34, but obviously they're being used in colleges too, you know, widely. So this is that slide I wanted to show you. The jewel nicotine content is over here, and this is what the European Union maximums are. So that's um, a concern of mine. This is what I was telling you about 66% think it's just flavoring and, um, and, and I, can, I can appreciate that, how they would think that. So this is an example of all the different companies and tobacco companies and whomever. Sorin is the product on the right, lower right, that looks like, looks like a product like this. Really smooth, really nice to hold. All these devices here, oh my goodness. So, um, and the different, you know, Mark 10 is another one. Um, they're made by different tobacco companies. But who knows what's going to be next? So as parents, I really care that you're paying attention to what you're seeing. Because if you see something and you're not sure what it is, be sure to ask and talk about it. And 
keep the communication open with your kids about what you're seeing um, because we're really going to need to be doing that. In this aerosol is a concern. The aerosol has nicotine in it. So with the, with the jewel, it's just a little blip. It's not much. But within that cloud, if you were to see a cloud, there's nicotine in that. There's um, cancer-causing chemicals. So when you heat propylene glycol, it makes cancer-causing chemicals like formaldehyde. Um, heavy metals like nickel, nickel, tin, and lead. Ultrafine particles. So particles can break off from that atomizer that heats the liquid and very ultra-fine ones that can embed in your lungs. And have you ever heard of popcorn lung? Popcorn lungs. So when popcorn was being made and they were using flavorings for popcorn, in fact, the workers were getting sick. They were getting lung disease, very serious lung disease. The disease is called uh, bronchiolitis obliterans. They were getting very sick. And it was caused from the chemical called diacetyl. And diacetyl is used in flavoring for e-cigarettes. Now, because we don't know what's always in these products, because they are not regulated by the FDA, we don't always know which whether diacetyl is in something, the flavoring that's in the product that somebody may be using. But it's something, hopefully, with the regulation of these liquids, we will know more about exactly what's in them and whether or not we're looking at diacetyl. But that is not a chemical that um, I think we're going to have to be continuing to pay attention to that. So why is all this an issue anyway? Nicotine is really dangerous to the developing brain. The brain doesn't develop until 25 fully. So when your intake in of, chem of nicotine, it changes the chemical and structural pathways in the brain in such a way that it makes kids have issues with impulse control and young people that, that are developing don't need any additional impulse control issues, right? As I remember being a parent when I was, the kids were young. Depression, mood disorders are an issue. Changing the circuits in the brain also makes it more apt that you would, um, it it's, creates learning challenges. So whether it's focus, attention, retention, whatever it is. So to me, when I think about kids coming to school and us really caring about what they're learning and they're using jewels that is going to interfere with their learning, it doesn't quite, it's, it's just concerning. And, and it primes their brains for future drug use and it also primes their, them for being more apt to use a combustible tobacco product. So that, they're four times more likely to use a combustible tobacco product if, if they've, um, you know, used a jewel. So, they're more likely, you know, I said that, and, um, you know, when you use younger, it's much more harder to quit, and you use more. So we know they're not safe. Everything that we've just talked about, um, they're not safe. We really need more research. And what I know in Massachusetts, because of the state we're in, there are people doing research now. It's going to take us some time, though, to really compile, compile the kind of research that we really need. But we're going to be learning more and more all the time. And you are kids. So I was at a, um, at a talk in Lexington with a Dr. Nicholas Chadi. He is frequently speaks locally. Um, he's really a good speaker on this topic. And someone asked him in the audience about, um, about secondhand smoke and, and nicotine and asked if 
you know, our kids, can they, it, it, can there be an intake of nicotine from a cloud if they're at a party where there's a lot of vaping going on? They're not vaping, but others are. And in fact, yes, you can. When he, he did say that, that you know, when you intake, when you breathe in the vapor of someone else, similar to secondhand smoke. So we're going to be learning, I think, more and more about that's the intake of whatever it is from people's secondhand um, vaping. So we know about this is some information at the back on fires and explosions of these big tanks. I mean, people have really gotten hurt. And we have an article back there of someone who actually was killed from a cigarette. That's this only one that I've ever heard of, but I'm not sure. Nicotine poisoning. So now we at least put childproof caps on the liquid. But I used to pass around all these liquids. I used to come with all kinds. And um, I don't know what happened to the, um, I'll show you some of the liquids. but the popcorn liquid and all the fruit flavors, and I used to pass them around, and we used to sniff the bottles and everything. I, I don't, you know, it, this, this stuff is poison, and I don't pass it around anymore. I've learned over the years. Um, how do we know if kids are vaping? How do you know? How do you know? How do you know in the school? If you see it, but... It's sort of hard to detect. Can you smell? Like the Faintly. Sort of kind of like a bad perfume, mm -hmm. you know, or a little bit of sweet. Mm -hmm. Some of the stronger ones might, I don't know whether mango smells, but mango's popular. Mint is very popular. Um, but do you smell it in the bathrooms? No? Interesting what we found was that for a while we thought the boys' bathroom, uh, there was a lot of it going on. We found that the, uh, the DRizer in the urinal was the actual smell. <laughs> <laughs> you have to be careful, right? But I think that um, the mango smell was one that we, we noticed early on, but now that that's been phased out in Massachusetts, uh, I think just the mint, the mint. is the only um, flavor that's really available. Stay. It's it's been harder to detect that. It's harder to detect the mint. Yeah, yeah. And as a state, we will be going after mint. So you know, in policy wise, wise, you know, that will be the next thing we we attack is uh, menthol and mint. So in the history of um, the tobacco world. Where do, you, where do kids get them? So they, they can get them in corner stores. They can get them in retail outlets. They, they're obviously not legal to buy in, in, in outlets, but somehow kids are able to get them. But what we're doing in many communities is restricting flavor. So we're putting a restriction on um, flavored tobacco products in re retail outlets and allowing it in um, smoke shops or adult-only retail establishments. So um, you probably don't have any retail establishments in these towns that just sell adult-only. I don't, I don't, I wouldn't expect you to. My memory isn't great with all the 50 towns I have. I can't remember the policy in each one, but I can't expect that you have um, adult-only establishments. I know they didn't in Topsfield. And they just pass flavor. And I'm not exactly, I should have checked before I came tonight to see where your policy is here, but Joyce Redford is a really good tobacco control person, and she um, helps you in Hamilton and Wenham, and I'm certain that you'll have good policy if you want to have it. If your Board of Health requests it, that will happen here. I'm not concerned at all about it. Friends and social sources, um, they're trying to crack down on online because kids, you know, could go in and, and put a credit card in and go online and order um, any one of these products and are you 18, check. 
but they're trying to do, they're trying to put systems in place so that kids aren't, um, they're, they actually check when your, um, when the delivery happens and they will deny delivery. So that's, that's happening and it's much more common and a really good thing. So I want to make sure that people understand that the tobacco industry is targeting our kids here. They've done it for decades. They're still doing it. They use sweet products <coughs> like we've talked about. They use cheap. So all, a lot of these products are now you're seeing online specials. You're seeing Juul for much less money. You know, so the price comes down. Um, is low, the use can go up, um, and, 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 and they're the ones that we have to be on top of and really try to do what we can to use legislation and policy and as much as we can to make sure that our kids are not the next generation of nicotine addicts. Um, we really have to work hard at that and that's got me up to go to work every day for the last 21 years. <clears throat> These products are kind of what introduced flavor into the tobacco world, and you can see how there are 16 tobacco products embedded in that image. So it's pretty hard to, at a glance, pick which images are candy and which images are tobacco products. But that's, um, I think, a pretty powerful image of um, what they look like. Flavor is the reason kids started. This is it. They knew it. They used flavor to get our kids involved. And this is um, the unfortunate piece about the flavor. That, and you know, our kids have been getting flavored Things like amoxicillin and blue bubble gum antibiotics since they were little. So flavor for them doesn't mean harmful, it you know, means helpful in some cases. So that's um, a concern. This is these are the images of uh, I carry this around. This poor box, my popcorn box is falling apart now. Um, but that is a big container of e-liquid, and it is, it's never been opened, that was one I didn't open, and it, the entire box over there reeks of popcorn, so I don't know how they get it to smell through the plastic. And um, these are the, this is a special. So the, um, this is the blue, so this is a product that looks very similar to the jewel, almost identical to it black, same long, sleek, thin. It was a dollar last year online, one dollar. So I sent away for it and I got it, sir. sure enough, they sent me the blue and um, so um, high prices are helpful in reducing use and we certainly did that with smoking. Easy to get, really easy to get these things. If you talk to kids, it's not easy yet. It's, it's not difficult for them at all to, to get any one of these products. Um, and the more they see these, now these signs are going up in convenience stores, on the windows, Jewel is, isn't regulated in terms of their advertising. So the more they advertise, so the use goes up and it goes up proportionately, as it did with smoking, with e-cigarette advertising. So they're doing quite a bit of it now. It's on the radio, too. They're trying to get cigarette smokers to jewel. That's the latest um, and the greatest. So they're still putting their image out there. The kids, I think, have to be engaged in helping us put an end to this, in my opinion. So what the kids are doing tomorrow is really hopeful. And if anyone, if any kids here at the high school are interested, I keep reminding the state that I wish they would bring this youth movement that we have at the high school level to the middle school level, because I think we really need it at the middle school level. 
and um, they, they're trying to figure out how they're going to make that happen. But um, I think it really is important. Educate yourselves so you're the ones here tonight, and I appreciate that, and thank you for being the spokespeople for this issue in your community. GetOutreach.org is the website that the state has created, and um, it has a tab for schools, it has a tab for parents, it has a tab for Get the Facts, and all the information um, that's at the back table can uh, be obtained through um, this website and through this, there's a toolkit um, that schools can use, um, and Mass Clearinghouse has all these materials on them. So we just have to keep, oh, and we have a um, Catch My Breath curriculum that's, that's good for middle schoolers and high schoolers. It's a four-piece curriculum for 30-minute um, segment curriculum that's free to schools that's really I've seen it delivered in Peabody at an eighth grade and it was in 30 minutes the kids got that they were being targeted by the industry so that was pretty um, exciting to me to see that happen and there's going to be more and more um, that's going to be coming and people are going to be developing more and more um, resources one thing that I think we do need and this is the 84. The kids will be coming across the common tomorrow. I can't wait to see them. Smoke Free Teen is really developed for kids that smoke, so it's not as good as I think it is. And hang tight because the 1 800 quit now number does take calls from teens. 12 to 17, so if they wanted help, it's not going to give them any medication or anything, but if they needed guidance around needing help to stop, that is another resource for them. As well as this text quit to 202-804-9884, and that is a, um, an initiative put together by the Truth Initiative, and it's a really, there are tips that come daily to the teen's phone and guides them around craving, helps them with triggers, helps them really move towards stopping. Because I have to say, there are kids out there that are really starting to quit. They're needing help. They're highly addicted. They know it. And so we're looking for as many resources as we can to really help them quit because we're we don't have we don't have evidence based cessation tools for them to stop. We just don't have that. So that is being explored at UMass Medical School now. What kind of resources can we can we put together for these kids? You know about the state laws. I did mention that. Any questions? Anything you can think of that you Want to talk about about this? So yeah. This is not regulated by the FDA. How are they selling it? I don't know. Mara Healy's on it. You know, it doesn't seem okay, does it? Disturbing. Initially, yeah, that, that's sort of, yeah. But, but they never knew what, how much they came to again, exactly, you know? If you want to quit, it's really good, if you're a smoker, to use an evidence-based method, which is to use, you know, patches, gum, something regulated by the FDA, so you know what the delivery of nicotine is going to be. But to use something like this that is not really regulated, how do you know what you're getting to help yourself quit? So that that's that sort of idea didn't really work. Yeah. The evidence is showing that. Um, has been very effective in 
help the adults get off cigarettes, but it's not the next step. Many people have had difficulty getting off the e-cigarette once they've gotten off cigarettes. So it's complicated. You know, you've traded one addiction for a different one. Yeah, you're still addicted to nicotine. But it's different for an adult, you know? It's not the number of chemicals that are in that are in burning tobacco, you know. And the brain is fully developed in an adult. I'm just wondering if that was the origin of all this, where it's like snow turned into Well, that's the origin story. Right? That's the story. That's the story. I, I don't know. Pretty, pretty wild out there. It's the wild west. Yeah. Well, thank you. If you want to see any of the um, the products, some of the other ones over here, I have. Them if you want to look at them, and um, thank you for coming. Really appreciate it.